let's dive right into it. I am about as sedentary as they come. I don't lift weights. I don't ride my bike. I spend most of my day in bed. I probably burn less calories than somebody who just has a day job at a desk. Uh, I don't burn a lot of calories. I'll put it that way. However, a month and a half ago, I looked like this. I was 207 pounds. Now I'm look like this. I'm 187 pounds. Which one looks better than you? But then to you, <laughs> which one looks better to you? Uh, I'd argue the one on the right or where I've, wherever I've edited it. This is the skinnier version of me looks better. I look better in a t-shirt. I don't have a double chin. And all I've done is adjust my diet. I haven't exercised at all. And I'm burning very, very few calories, which means I have to eat not a lot of calories, which sounds scary, right? But people are like, oh, I don't want to be in a, like, I don't want to eat like salads all day. You don't have to do a fad diet. You don't have to do salads and starve yourself or do keto or a carnivore diet or a Mediterranean diet or any of these fad diets, the crash diets where you don't eat basically the entire week and then you just binge on the weekends and then you, you still get fat because your total calorie throughout the week is in a surplus. You don't have to do any of that. And I've super simplified how you can lose weight without going to the gym. And you've heard your coworker or your buddy say as they lean on your desk, like, oh man, I'm so fat, I need to go to the gym. And then they inevitably don't go to the gym. This person can still lose weight and look better without going to the gym or riding a bike. Will you look better even more if you went to the gym or rode a bike? Yes. Do you have to do that? No, I'm not telling you to do that. Nobody's telling you to do that. Um, so you can look better uh, than you do now just through diet. And I'm not talking, people think they hear the word diet and they freak out. They think it's a diet. I very few small adjustments. And if you care just a little bit, you can make a huge difference in losing weight. And I'm going to show you how two things you need to know. Number one is basal metabolic rate. Your basal metabolic rate is how many calories you're burning just to stay alive. Total daily energy expenditure, TDEE. That's how many, that's your basal metabolic rate plus how many calories you are um, burning by moving around, talking to people, using your brain, drinking caffeine, all these things that burn calories on top of your basal metabolic rate. That's your total daily energy expenditure. When you're trying to gain weight, you eat above your total daily energy expenditure. When you want to lose weight, you eat below your total daily energy expenditure. How do you find out what your TDEE is? Very simply, you go to tdeecalculator.com net. Um, I put in my information here. I'm 28 years old. I'm 187 pounds down 20 pounds in a month and a half. I'm six foot tall and I work, uh, I don't work an office job. I don't do fucking anything. So I'm sedentary. I don't know what my body fat percentage is and neither do you, unless you've had a DEXA scan or you've gotten uh, your body, you know, fat caliper measurements done. So don't put it in if you don't know what it is and hit calculate. Basal metabolic rate here is 1800 calories. Uh, it's just enough for me to stay alive. If I eat less than that, I'd slowly starve to death. So my total daily energy expenditure is 2,227 calories. You can see it gives you examples of if you're doing light exercise, moderate exercise, heavy exercise, or athlete. They define athlete by doing two two sessions of exercise per day, which would probably be two sets of weightlifting, two two uh, you know two different uh, two different sessions of weightlifting and two, or weightlifting and cardiovascular exercise. Um, so my total daily energy expenditure is 2,227 calories. What should I do to lose weight? Here's my advice to you. Number one is use my, my plate. And I don't mean all the time. I only mean for two weeks. And I, I recommended this to every single one of my, uh, personal training clients. Uh, when I was a personal trainer, measure how many calories you're taking in over the course of two weeks. So you literally can scan barcodes on food items and or, or measure it in half cups or whatever um, and enter the portion. It's really easy. And you can see how many calories you're eating in a day. And so you do that across two weeks and this does two things. Number one, it tells you how many calories you're eating in a day on average. So you can see how it compares to your total daily energy expenditure. Most likely you're in a surplus. People who are fat tend to get fatter um, because they're, they're in a slight surplus or uh, you know, a moderate surplus and they're slowly getting fatter year by year. So that's number one. What the fuck was I just saying? Oh, it also gives you an idea of, of how many calories are in a certain portion of food. So like a cup of spaghetti or two thirds a cup of ice cream and stuff like that. So it gives you a kind of framework of like, oh, okay, this is how many calories might be in this portion of food that I'm eating. 
So it just gives you a good idea when you had zero idea before. So you can take a look at how many calories you're burning uh, or how many calories you're taking in on average across the two weeks that you measured and compare it to your total daily energy expenditure. Are you in a caloric surplus? Probably. Significantly? Probably. So it's time to cut your calories back. How are we going to do that? And how many calories are we going to cut back? Take a look at your TDEE. If you are not training, which means you're not weightlifting or, or burning calories doing cardio, like running or doing um, or biking, I'd recommend tr aiming for roughly 200 calories less than your TDEE. This is this is um, a less of a calorie deficit than somebody who's weightlifting. And that's a very important thing to note because people who are weightlifting have protein synthesis going on. So their muscle is either building or they're maintaining their muscle just by stimulating muscle activity. Because you are not a bodybuilder, um, you're not going to have a whole lot of room to have a caloric deficit um, without burning through your, your muscle stores as well. So you want to burn through as much fat as possible while maintaining as much muscle as possible. So this means staying as in, in a very small caloric deficit. So it's going to take a little bit longer for you to lose weight. And that's totally fine because you just stick to your plan. And I'll show you exactly what my diet is in a second. Um, generally speaking, people who are weightlifting, this changes over time as they reach, slowly reach their genetic limit. But in the bodybuilding context, typically they would eat 500 calories in a surplus um, to build muscle with the least amount of fat gain and 500 calories in a deficit to lose as much fat, fat as possible while maintaining uh, as much without without losing as much uh, muscle as possible for you you're not a bodybuilder you're not lifting weights so you need to be in a lower cal caloric deficit to maintain as much muscle as possible while burning fat so i recommend being a roughly around 200 calories in a deficit okay so you track your calories across two weeks you see how much you earn in surplus now you know you know you need to be 200 calories in a deficit how do you go from your surplus that you've been eating all the time to being in that deficit without starving yourself to death and hating your life. Here's what I do. I eat the same goddamn thing every single day. It makes it so easy. And if every once in a while I have dinner with family or every once in a while I want a goddamn cookie or whatever, I'll have it. But the thing is being consistent, right? So, you know, seven out of eight days or nine out of 10 days I'm consistent and then I'll have a cheat day or I'll eat with the family and or I don't give a fuck, I'll eat whatever. But the more consistent you are, the faster you're gonna be losing weight, right? And if you're consistent most days out of the week, if you're seven out of, you know, six out of eight days out of the week, you're consistent and you're not having huge binge at the end of the week, then you're going to be continually losing weight regardless if you cheat one day out of the week or have a meal that you don't really know how many calories you're taking in, et cetera, or you're having a date and you don't want to look like a freak because you're having a tiny little portion of food. Here's exactly what I eat every day. Two things to take into consideration. Uh, like I said earlier, you, bodybuilders are maintaining protein synthesis through their weightlifting. You need to be eating as much protein as possible to maintain as much protein synthesis as, poss as possible. When I say as much protein as possible, I literally mean eat as much protein as possible because you're not going to reach your target protein uh, limit. Um, rough, I mean, you, with a 2000 calorie diet, they recommend like a certain amount of protein. But when you're trying to maintain as much muscle as possible while you're burning fat, you need to eat as much protein as you possibly can. And you're not going to reach your goal because you're going to be eating so few calories because you're sedentary. Um, this sounds bad, right? When I say so few calories, but I'll show you how easy it is. First of all, you can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's fine. As long as you're in that caloric deficit, I would recommend if you are going to eat breakfast that you do a high calorie or excuse me, a high protein breakfast with a very low carbohydrates. So I would even go just protein. So just eggs and bacon or just eggs and sausage or something like that with a little cheese or whatever you want. Um, this way, you're not having uh, an intake of carbohydrates that's going to spike your blood sugar and you're going to have a huge crash and you'll have cravings in just a few hours and then it's going to make you cheat on your diet. For me, what's really, really easy is skipping breakfast. It, it's so easy. If you're not used to it, it'll take you two weeks to get used to it. It's so easy. So I skip breakfast and here's what I do for lunch. At 11.45, I have two eggs. That's 140 calories and 12 grams of protein. I also have one slice of bacon. That's 42 calories and three grams, grams of protein. Combined, that's just a little less than probably a scoop of your average protein powder. It's worth of protein. Then I wait till 545. And in between, I'm not hungry because I just ate protein. I didn't ha have any uh, carbohydrates. So I don't have that blood sugar spike and crash. So I didn't have any cravings between my breakfast at 1145 and then my dinner 
at 545. So that's why I recommend having a high protein breakfast, uh, uh, breakfast if, you, if you're doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and also high protein, you know, breakfast at noon if you're doing intermittent fasting. At dinner, I eat half a rotisserie chicken. That's a lot of protein. That's 70 grams. So that's like three and a half scoops of protein, basically. And it's 18, it's 800 calories. So I recommend at least one meal out of your day, probably your dinner meal, have a significant source of protein because a lot of the other, you're going to have a lot of other smaller meals that are going to have less protein. So in my case, I chose half a rotisserie chicken, which is 70 grams of protein. That's where I'm getting the majority of my protein from is the chicken. So you're going to have a, have a meat source where you're getting the most, uh, your most protein from. Then I have 70 calories of rice. It's literally a packet of rice that I microwave for 90, you know, it's like a pilaf or pa, pil, I don't know how to pronounce it, pilaf, pilaf, pilaf. It's a package of uh, rice that I put in the microwave for 90 seconds and then it's done. 70 calories, 1.5 grams of uh, protein. Then I do also a package, a frozen package of mixed vegetables that I can microwave for five minutes. That's 40 calories, one gram of protein. And then I'm eating way too much fucking ice cream. Um, but uh, two cups of ice cream, because I hate my life, <laughs> two cups of ice cream, calories about 414. That's the most calories I'm having out of any meal outside of the chicken. And I get about six grams of protein from the ice cream. Um, obviously, a lot of sugar there. So if you can substitute it with something else, then great. But you're already, you know, give yourself a break a little bit, right? So nutritional breakdown, right? Eggs, 140. Bacon, 42. Rotisserie chicken, 800, rice, 70, veggies, 40, ice cream, 414. My total calories that I'm taking in is 1,500. Let's go back and take a look at my TDEE. That's 2,200. So I am in roughly a 700 calorie uh, deficit. Now, I can get away with this a little bit more, right? I told you 200 calorie deficit. I can get away with a higher caloric deficit because I'm on testosterone replacement therapy, which means my testosterone is 750 nanograms per deciliter all the time, all week. Most people have a peak in the morning, so they'd have 750 in the morning, but then a trough at like 400 in the evening, while mine stays at 750 all the time. So I have a higher level of protein. I'm just being honest with you. I am having a higher level of protein synthesis throughout the entire day. I can get away with a higher caloric deficit without losing as much muscle. Now, am I working out? No. Did I say that bodybuilders usually go for a 500 calorie deficit? Yes. Am I more than that? Yes. Should I be eating more? Probably. So I should probably up my calories by two to 300 calories if I want to maintain more muscle um, while losing fat. So I'm under eating. Even with two, two cups of ice cream, I'm under eating. Um, so I could add in some snacks in between my lunch meal and my dinner meal, um, preferably something uh, high protein. I can do a high protein shake with a banana and, or a, you know vanilla, vanilla protein powder with berries and um, milk. I, that's a pretty good source of, uh, micros and it's uh, actually tastes really, really good. Um, I forget the brand of protein. I'll link it in the, in the down below, but if you use it in a blender with veggie or with, uh, berries and milk, it's really, really good. Um, so yeah, I eat this every single day, two eggs, slice of bacon, half a rotisserie chicken, some, some rice for that in microwave, veggies, two cups of ice cream, the total calories is 1,500, and total grams of protein, 93.5. Not bad for grams of protein. Bodybuilders usually go for one gram of protein per pound of body weight, so I'm about, you know, half, like, I'm about half that. You know, I'm half short of what I should be if I, were, if I were working out. But again, when you're eating a caloric deficit that's this significant when you're sedentary, it's very hard to meet that high demand of protein. Um, so that's why I say eat as much protein as humanly possible because you're not going to hit your target protein anyway, but you want to hit as much as possible so you can maintain as much muscle as possible while you're losing weight. Now I could be eating more calories. I can feel my quads burning while I'm going up the stairs. So I should add in probably a protein shake that's uh, mixed in with a banana or like, you know, multiple scoops of protein plus maybe a high protein snack in between my breakfast meal and my dinner meal. So this is giving me an idea here just through chat GBT. Literally, I just put in all the stuff I'm eating in chat GBT and it gives me an estimate of my protein and calorie intake. And it tells me exactly how much protein and how many calories I'm taking in compared to my TDEE, which again is about 2200. And I'm noticing that I'm in a significant caloric deficit, which I wouldn't have known otherwise. So I realize now that I can eat a little bit more food than, uh, and still lose weight. So there is 
there's your information. So again, you need to track your calories using my plate for two weeks to get a good idea of how much you're eating every day. Take a look at your TDEE. You need to uh, create a diet that's going to put you 200 calories or so below your total daily energy expenditure and stick to that diet every single day. You can also introduce uh, greens powder to hit your micros. And um, it's going to be like 50, 40 calories. It's going to be really light. I, I recommend the Jocko's green powder. It's a uh, pretty good peach flavor, not the almond or coconut flavor. That tastes like shit, but the peach flavor is really good. Um, and uh, you're going to hit your micros and all that stuff. And you're going to be 200 calories. I forget where my brain is going with this. But 200 calories below your total daily energy expenditure. Hit as much protein as possible. S eat the same thing every single day and you will consistently lose weight. The one thing you wanna additionally look at is how much weight you're losing per week. I recommend that you do not go over maximum one pound per week. I am losing about a pound per week. You can tell because I'm eating at a 700 caloric, uh, calorie deficit. And there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat. So seven, 14, 21, 28, uh, about, I'm losing uh, about a pound every five days. That's pretty fucking fast. <laughs> Um, so I need to eat a little bit more. Um, I would highly recommend you do not eat, uh, lose more than half a pound per week. Take in consideration that you need to be tracking your weight week by week, not day by day. So day by day is kind of confusing because your weight will fluctuate quite a bit depending on how hydrated you are, whether or not you've taken a shit, et cetera. So it'll be like 180, 190, 190.5, 180.5, 180, but it's actually trending downwards, but it's bouncing all over the place. So it's messing with your head. So, so when you're looking at your weight, you want to track it week by week, not day by day. You know, you can do your daily measurements, but just take a look at the weekly trend, not the daily trend, because that's going to mess with your head. Okay. That's how you lose weight without, uh, exercise, strictly diet, and you can look good doing it. Um, don't do crash diets. Don't do any of that kind of stuff. Stay at as, as a minimal of a caloric deficit as you possibly can to maintain as much mu muscle as you possibly can. I am eating in way too much of a deficit. I need to up my calories so that I can maintain some of my muscle while I lose these next 10 pounds because I don't want to end up looking skinny fat because well, I'm not doing any exercise and then I lost all my muscle and I don't have an opportunity to put that muscle back on for the next three to five months or whatever while I'm doing this chemotherapy for my autoimmune encephalitis. Okay, I think that covers everything. Um, I know that was kind of all over the place, but that's where my brain is right now, especially after so many takes that I've done. Um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, you don't have to exercise, go to the gym, ride bikes to lose weight and look good. Um, but uh, at some point, if you want to take it to the next level, obviously go to the gym and start riding your bike or your running um, to look even better. But uh, yeah, that'll help you look better than you do now, you little fatty. Okay, talk to you guys in the next one. Appreciate it. Hope you have a good day. Bye. So